Guys, I appreciate your time today. Uh, I'm going to start out real quick just offering our thoughts and prayers to Coach Perkins' family. Uh, Coach is a guy who touched a lot of lives in the National Football League as well as college football. There's a lot of relationships around this country with him. Uh, personally, I've had some you know, crossover with Coach through his time coming through Tuscaloosa when I was down there as well as some contact early in my uh, tenure here. But I uh, appreciate everything he did for me, uh, the time he shared with me, and uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to his family. Um, that being said, we've moved on all of our focus today uh, past Seattle. We're on to the Cardinals now. Um, this is a team that's very explosive. Uh, this is a very talented team. There's a lot of people on this team that can make a difference on all sides of the ball. You know, I think it starts you know, right away with the way the team is built, and uh, that starts with the head coach and how he calls it and how he gets the offense moving. And Cliff does a great job in terms of scheme, using tempo, really creating matchups for his players and letting them play to their strengths. You know, This quarterback is obviously – you know, a dynamic player. You know, I've been asked a lot of questions relative to how is he similar to Russell Wilson. I think these are very different players, but both are very good uh, with similar skill sets in terms of being able to run and throw, but he's totally his own player. And this guy does a great job improvising on his feet, extending plays, you know, keeping his eyes downfield and making big throws. He's got a rocket for an arm. And this guy can be as aggressive as he wants to because he's very, very accurate with the ball. You know, you put that along with the receivers he has to throw to, and this, you know, is a group of weapons that's very explosive. Offensively, though, it really starts with the running game with them. You know, Drake and Evans, these guys are both having good seasons. They do a very good job of getting the ball downhill at you. They got a very good zone run game. They'll also mix it up with some game plan runs and poles and gap schemes. You know, Cliff does a good job mixing this in with the tempo and keeping you on your toes. You know, Vance on the defensive side, you know, he really coordinates it from the back end aspect of it. They've done a very good job mixing looks. Uh, this is a blitz-heavy team. We've got to be alert for a lot of movement, a lot of pressure throughout the game plan. They do a very good job of changing up on you. You know, they'll blitz with linebackers, DBs, whoever's involved. Everyone's going to get a turn. He keeps it very multiple and spinning on you. And then jumping over to special teams, I think Jeff Rogers, one of the more aggressive coaches in the league, he does a very good job. His units are always very well prepared, and he calls the game to make big plays. So we've got to be on our toes in all three phases. We've got a lot to prepare for this week. We have a lot of ground to cover on this opponent. That being said, I'll open up to any questions you may have. Kyle Odegaard. Hey, Coach. Kyle Odegaard from azcardinals.com. You, you probably saw on the tape that the Cardinals were uh, rotating some interior offensive linemen last week, and they've done that a few times. I'm wondering, just in your opinion, why you think it's so prevalent for teams to rotate on the defensive line, but why it's so rare to see that on the offensive line? Well, I think the, uh, the old school school of thought is, you know, you want to have five guys operating as one unit on the offensive line, whereas defensive line, you're trying to keep guys fresh. You know, for us, we're in a similar situation. We're rotating a lot of our offensive line right now. We've taken that approach in terms of, number one, developing as many players as we can, and number two, keeping guys as fresh as we can so that throughout the course of the game, we feel that we're better prepared. Uh, I don't know if that's their reason for it. Uh, it's working for them. They're doing a good job. They're developing a lot of players, and they've been effective, and these guys protect the quarterback as well as anybody in the league. Bob McManaman. Hey, Joe, uh, questions about Kyler Murray and uh, bottling him up. Some teams have been able to do that successfully, a lot of them lately. Um, what are your thoughts about how he's looked and if he's looked a little different and, and if, how much of a threat is he still despite maybe having going through some, some pains right now? No, this dude's a threat every time he's got the ball, which is basically every play. You know, uh, obviously we're going to talk to our team about trying to limit uh, his extended plays and trying to keep him from really making explosive plays with his feet. That's a lot easier said than done. There's a lot of things we're going to have to do in practice this week to get us prepared for that. You know, I think the thing that's, you know, I don't want to say unique, but very special about him is, you know, he throws the ball equally as well when he rolls to his right or his left. You know, a lot of quarterbacks are very, you know, heavy to roll out to their, you know, dominant hand so they can throw on the run. This guy does a tremendous job of throwing back across his body. Uh, he can throw at different arm angles, you know, whether he's throwing it sidearm or over the top. The ball comes out just so quick with this guy, and he's just ridiculously accurate. I mean, you can see that baseball background, how this guy just gets that thing in there. And he, he's just very accurate, puts it in tight windows. He's very aggressive with it. And he's got very sure-handed receivers that are used to catching balls in tight spaces. They make big plays as a result. Bob Glover. Joe, you mentioned uh, Ray Perkins before. Are you able to share maybe one or two things he has told you and helped you with as a coach and and are you familiar with his legacy uh with the giants though it was many years ago i am familiar with it yes i am uh and i've had a lot of conversations with both coaches who've worked under him as well as coaches who come after him um both here and down in tuscaloosa as well actually the first time i met coach perkins i was actually working at southern miss for a spring 
and uh, he was at a junior college down the road. He came up, watched us practice one day, and we just spent some time talking. I had just come from Alabama. He had been in Alabama, obviously, through his time. So we shared some stories about Tuscaloosa, but you know, he spent a lot of time to me that day actually talking about being a young coach and really working with players and developing the players. And that was the biggest thing that he really shared with me, and that's a message that's been echoed to me by a lot of people I've been around uh, that have been very successful. But the development of the players is what he really hammered me with. And that really came after a spring practice of watching a lot of young guys out there and trying to plug guys around and find the right spot for them. And he was just sharing some wisdom on, hey, listen, give everybody an opportunity to improve and don't make your mind up too early on what you think someone can do. Kevin? Joe, when, when you look back at when you came here, what was the most you know, crucial thing you installed in this team to change the culture? You know, I think with me, uh, I've always had a big belief in, in just discipline and accountability. And I think the accountability to your teammates, and that's whether it's coach to coach, coach to player, player to player, player to coach, we all have to be accountable to one another. And that's in how we work and how we prepare. And that's in whatever the result of our preparation is. And uh, don't make any excuses. You know, just call it what it is. Be honest with each other. If we're transparent and we're honest, we can all go ahead and improve and move on. But to me, it's just about, you know, being accountable to each other. And that discipline comes with that as well because – if you know you have to own up to the man next to you, if they're counting on you, then you have to do everything it takes to be successful. Thank you. Kim Jones. Hey, Joe. Um, two quick ones, if I may. What has turned around the running game? I think you seven in a row now with at least 100 yards rushing. And, and I apologize if I missed it. Uh, did you have a Daniel update? All right, so uh, as far as Daniel, we're going to give him an opportunity to go out there today, move around the field. Um, we're still in that point of the week. I haven't seen him do anything physically yet this week since the end of last week, really. We'll see him move around today. Uh, we're optimistic. I know he's you know, going to tell us everything we want to hear. We've got to, again, use our eyes instead of our ears with Daniel. Um, so we're going to put him out there today, make sure we you know, give him a chance to progress. Today's a walkthrough, so we're not going to see everything full speed. Tomorrow we'll be on the field moving around. And then Friday will be a big day for us to kind of make a final decision, hopefully, going into the weekend. In terms of run game, I don't think turnaround is probably the right phrase for it. I think what I just need is consistent improvement, Kim, and that these guys have worked hard day in, day out. Um, look, we've adjusted schematically based on you know what we do well and, and how we can have an advantage over certain opponents. Our guys have been very fluid in what we've asked them to do. Uh, they've really bought into the techniques we're teaching, and they've done everything they can to master them. So to me, I think it's just you know the cumul uh, you know cumulative work they're putting throughout the season, and just seeing one day stack on top of the other. Hey, Joe. Hey, Paul. Um, hey, I know you're not looking at this in any way, shape, or form yet, but I'm going to ask you about it. Your game was flexed in week 15, the Browns game. Um, I'm sure that's you'll play them at 1 a.m. or 1 p.m., whatever they tell you to play. But um, the fact that that is a, a national sign that um, your team is now relevant, you know, your team is in a playoff chase. Um, you know what's coming with your team as far as the pressure with that, the outside noise with that. How do you keep that away? You were in it for every year. You were with the Patriots. Um, keep that away, but also really embrace it maybe. Yeah, I think just the focus has to always be on what we're doing right now and the process of getting ready for the Cardinals. And, and you know, the fact the game was flexed, to be completely just transparent and honest with you, look, we'll play whenever. I mean, we're so fortunate to be able to go out there. We talked about this as a team today is we're fortunate to go out there and play football. You know, there was a period this summer where we're all sitting there on phone calls and talking to each other of, are we going to have a season? Is it going to start late? How are we going to get this thing going? You know, to be at the point we are in a season right now, we're just very fortunate to be playing. But in terms of the pressure and the noise outside, I think you just have to keep your focus on what you're doing immediately. Today's Wednesday. We're working on early downs, working on the kicking game, working on fundamentals. Tomorrow's Thursday. We're working on a lot of situational football. Third down, red area, two minute. You know, Friday's going to be a red zone day for us. It's going to be a lot of review for us from throughout the week. If we just keep our focus immediate on what we have to do that day to improve, and get ready for Sunday, that's all that really matters. You know, right now there's a lot of talk about hypothetical games. You know, we can't sit here and live in some, you know, imaginary world about things that don't exist yet. The Cardinals are very real. They're getting on a plane. They're coming to play us, you know, at MetLife. And that's what we have to get ready for. Thanks, Joe. Thanks. Yeah, we got time for two more. Tom Rock and Duggan. Tom Rock. Joe, there was a stat that the last time the Giants had a defense that was as uh, productive as you've been over the last four games were the two Super Bowl years. Do, do you feel like this defense is playing at a championship level and, and it's good enough to, to bring you uh, through the rest of the season and, and beyond? I like the way they're improving. I love the way they're working every day. 
think this team's really playing as what we say is a team. And uh, this unit's really come together nicely. I think they're building on their ability to play with a lot of multiples. They're building on their position versatility, which allows Pat to put together creative game plans and allow us to go ahead and use some disguise. But then also, it ultimately comes down to the fundamentals, being able to just play straight ahead and beat the man across me. And I think our guys have really improved fundamentally as well as schematically. You know, in terms of everything else, I just, you know, we're trying to get this team good enough to play against the Cardinals this week. Uh, anything after that, you know, we haven't discussed or thought about or talked about. We have a ways to go as an organization. We have a lot of improvement we have to make. There's a lot of things I have to do better. There's a lot of things we all have to do better playing and coaching wise. So today's going to be a good focus on getting a step forward, and we have to focus on that every day. And then just on the defense, is Blake, uh, he'll be back this week? You know, again, I got to be fair to Blake and see where he's at. I hope so. Um, he's in the meetings with us today. I had a smile on his face, and he's laughing. So you can always cut it with Blake, but there's obviously guys are coming out of games, they're banged up, they're sore. Today being a walkthrough day is really part of the recovery from our trip going out west. Um, so that should allow some guys with some nicks and bumps to do some things in practice. But when we get out there tomorrow, it kind of gives us a better look in terms of guys that are dinged and bumped up in terms of how they can move around. Thank you. Last one here, Dougie. Hey, Joe, you know things are going well. Where I don't think you've had a question since Sunday about special teams, so I'll be that guy. What, what's kind of been going wrong in that phase the last two weeks, and, and how do you fix it? Yeah, look, we just go back to work and work on the fundamentals and make sure we're communicating as a unit, all right, moving forward. So, again, that's obviously a phase that we put a large emphasis on here. We have good players on there. We have good coaches working with it. Um, we can play against good teams. They're going to have a chance to make plays. It's our duty and our responsibility to make sure they don't make plays. So we've got to do a better job coaching it and playing it. It starts with me.